In this video, we're going to look at a report published on the US Department of Agriculture website. The scientific research is titled Applying Spent Coffee Grounds Directly to Urban Agriculture Soils Greatly Reduces Plant Growth. Hi, I'm Rob from Sustainable Journey. Before you go and load up your plants with coffee grounds, you may want to consider this university research into the negative effects of used coffee grounds on a range of plants used in the trial. This research was done at Melbourne University, Australia and published by the US Department of Agriculture. The research identified the problem of greatly reduced growth in plants and provides several specific workarounds, one of which is composting coffee prior to application, though specifically with certain percentages and duration. I will quickly summarise this research for you. They grew five horticultural plants, leek, radish, viola, sunflower and broccoli. This group was deliberately selected to be wide-ranging enough to cover most other agricultural plant groups. They grew them in three different soil types, sandy, sandy clay loam and loam soils. They doubled the amount of testing by doing one lot with fertiliser and the other without. Increasing the study even further, feeding the plant groups different rates of spent coffee grounds. The rates were 0% for the control group, 2.5%, 5%, 10% and 20%. So there was a lot of testing of these different plants in different soil types with and without fertiliser and with different amounts of spent coffee grounds. They observed, I quote, All plants grown in coffee amended soil treatments showed poor growth compared to the control and fertiliser amended soil treatments. The study further suggests two possible explanations for this. The first is nitrogen drawdown created by microorganisms in the soil. When the microorganisms are converting the spent coffee grounds into nitrogen the plant can use, they actually use a small amount of soil nitrogen to do this. So the plant is left for a period of time with depleted nitrogen in the soil. The second and more likely explanation is the plant is having a toxic stress response when the spent coffee grounds are introduced to the soil. This is highly probable considering the chemicals in the coffee grounds such as caffeine, tannins and several others. This is a popular theory by many research scientists. Regardless, the research states that when fresh uncomposted coffee is added to gardens and crops at volume quantity rates of 2.5% and higher, it will likely decrease all plant growth and development. Interestingly, but probably not surprisingly, that along with the decreased plant growth, there was a notable reduction in weed growth. Decreased weed growth is a positive side effect in any horticultural situation. Further to this, they made comment that a possible use could be to use the spent coffee grounds as mulch over any field or garden that is lying fallow for six months or more. This will have a a twofold benefit. One, it will reduce weed growth, and two, it will give the coffee grounds time to detox. A Japanese study concurs, saying that the soil will show improvement after 12 months. They did, however, discover that adding spent coffee grounds to soil will improve the water holding capacity of most soils over time, and go on to say it's probably a better idea to add coffee grounds at a rate of no more than 20% to your compost. This will allow the microbes involved in composting time to decompose any toxic components harmful to the plants and extract any good elements from the coffee grounds. I have always been an advocate for putting coffee grounds in small amounts directly into compost, which probably isn't a surprise to anyone who has seen our composting videos. I would personally recommend composting coffee grounds for at least six months, especially quantities greater than 2.5% before using. As comprehensive as this study was, it didn't cover all plants, and as with life, there are always exceptions. I've included links to the report on the US Department of Agriculture website and a link to the University of Melbourne research in the description page below. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this helpful. Subscribe and share with friends if you want to see more related content. If you haven't already seen it, check out our how-to videos on all things garden. I hope this helps.